one more Excel test that came up into a job interview. Let's solve all those different four questions step by step from scratch. We have simple questions to solve, but we also have questions that require more dexterity. Let's start with the first one. One, use a formula to solve the operations below. And here we have addition, multiplication, division, and also subtraction. We have numbers in the row A and also in the row B, blue and green. And here we have just a, a little legend that is telling us what to do. So let's say add A to B, A add to B. So I need to take here the A and then add to the number B or 15 plus 35. Let's start with though this first mathematical operation where we have the addition. So equal sign always that you need to create a formula or a function in Excel, an operation. You need to use input the equal sign, equal sign. And then you can manually input the numbers such as 15, add to, add to, we can use the plus sign and then the second number that is 35 and then press enter. As you can see, we have the correct result. But instead of manually typing the, the numbers, I can equal sign select the cell where I have the number, add to another cell and then enter. We got the same result as before. The benefit to do the second method or to select the specific cells where you have the numbers is if you change the number, so let's say instead of using 35, I'm going to use 100 and then I'm going to press enter. As you can see, the result is going to be automatically updated whenever you update the reference. But let's move on to the second uh, operation that we need to do here. That is the multiplication. A times B. Okay, so A is the first number and B is the second one. Equal sign. 12 and a half times asterisk this little star times the number 10 and then i can press enter okay simple as that the third one we have the division a divided by b equal sign and then a 70 divide by or this uh slash to the right you know this backward slash and then select the second cell number five enter okay now the last one is a subtraction a minus b equal sign a minus the minus sign okay minus just a, a hyphen and then the second number here we need to be mindful because the question is asking us to do a minus b and of course a is 90 and uh, the number b is 180 and if you, you subtract if you take a minus b you're gonna have a negative number and that's it, it's correct. So let's press enter here. Okay, so just be mindful because you don't need to worry because here we're gonna have a negative value, minus 90. And that's it, so the first question is done. Let's move on to the second one where we need to do something a little bit different. Add up the values below and then add up only the values greater than 90. As you can see, we have a lot of different numbers here. We have numbers that are in the range that goes from maybe 10 is the smallest one and 99 is the largest one. So we have this range from 10 up to 99. And we need to add it up first all the values that we have. And then we need to add it up not all the values, but the values that are greater than 90. And as you can see, we have all those values being highlighted with this bluish color. So let's start here with the first task that is to have the grand total equal sign as we learned it before we can add up values just select the cell where we have the first value equal sign the first cell and then add to the second one add to the third one and on and on but uh here we're gonna take a long time to complete this task because we have a lot of cells to select and uh, maybe there is an alternative to create this solution because it's gonna take a long time equal sign some function this is why we have the sum function in excel a faster way to add up values to make an addition let's double click here equal sign sum one two and then the only thing that you need to do within the sum function is just select the, the range where you have the values that you need to add up everything as i'm doing here so i just select the entire range okay i done now we can go back at the top of the spreadsheet and then close parentheses and that's it enter and we're done this is the grand total, 80,000, 
507. Let's move on now to the question 2.2, that is addition of the values greater than 90. Equal sign sum function. As we learned before, the sum function can add up all the values within a range. But uh, this time we can't add up all the values that we have in the range, but just the values that match with a certain criteria. And to use a certain criteria with the sum function, we can use instead of the sum itself, the sum if, sum if, sum if the criteria is met, for example. So double click, click here in the sum if one, two to select. Now we have three arguments to input in the sum if function. The first one is the range, the second one is the criteria, and the third one is the sum range. Let's start with the first one, the range. The range here is the range where I want to check if my condition is true or false. So let's stick with the entire range or selecting here all the values that I have like this. And then I can move on to the second argument, comma, that is the criteria. But how can I translate this, let's say, sentence here, this text into an argument in Excel? Addition of the values greater than 90. I can use a logical operator that is greater than, greater than 90. So as you can see, I'm using here greater than greater than the arrow to the right if you wish to use less than you can use the arrow to the left less than and if you want to use equal to of course we can use the equal sign equal to less than and greater than but let's stick for now with the greater than all the things that are greater than 90 but here is very important and we need to be mindful because we need to input this argument here in between quotations so open quotations close quotations, quote, unquote, and then comma. The last argument that we have after we check in the range if the things that we have is going to match or not with the criteria, now it's time to add up the things that are that met with our criteria. So the things that I want to add up, what is the range of those things? The range is right here again, the numbers. So let me select everything again. Okay, like this. Let's go back at the top of the spreadsheet and then close parentheses. And that's it. Enter. Here we have. And as you can see, there's a lot of difference between the second question to the first one. Let's move on out to the question, the third one, the third question, where we need to use a different tool here in Excel. That is the conditional formatting. Three, using conditional formatting to highlight the sales greater than or equal to $40,000 in green. $40,000 in green. So as you can see here, we have a sales report with a lot of different values. And I need to highlight those values like this one right here, these two right here, this one right here. They are greater than or equal to $40,000. To use conditional formatting in Excel is very simple. We just need to select the range where we want to apply the conditional formatting like this. And then I can go to Home tab. And here is my tool, conditional formatting. I can click and then I can go to the first option, highlight sales rules. And here maybe we can stick with the first option, greater than, greater than. Click here. And then as my criteria that I need to input here in this formula bar, I can read it off, select everything that I have and then delete. I want to highlight the cells that are greater than $40,000. So 40000 and then here to the right, uh, instead of using red, the red color, I need to use the greenish one, like this. Okay, okay, and we almost done. Why almost done? Because the question is asking us to highlight the values that are greater than or equal to $40,000. And uh, we just highlighted the cells that are greater than $40,000. But at the $40,000 itself is not being highlighted. So we need to change something here because we also need to highlight the value if the value is equal to exactly equal to $40,000. And to do it, there is two ways to create this conditional formatting. Consider, let's say, greater than and equal to these two logical operators, greater than and equal to two different criteria. We can do in two different steps and uh, we can also do it at once, create a custom conditional formatting. But, Let's stick with the first method. So let's apply again to this range, a new conditional formatting, 
And now, instead of highlighting the values that are greater than $40,000, we highlight the values that are exactly $40,000, or in other words, equal to, equal to. Conditional for many, highlight sales rules, and here we have equal to. I want to use, again, $40,000, but uh, this time, uh, just highlight this specific cell, and then okay. Now we're done. So as you can see, we could apply here, greater than and equal to in two separate steps. First, we did one conditional formatting to highlight the values that are greater than 40,000. And uh, then we move on and did the conditional formatting again to highlight the cells that are equal to $40,000. Two different steps. But if you want to apply this conditional formatting at once to format everything that is greater than or equal to at once, we can do a custom conditional formatting. So let's learn how to do it. But uh, anyways, if you want to keep this solution here, it's okay, it's correct, because you already solved the question. So it's 100% correct. But I just uh, I want to show you another solution here. Let me click the Home tab, and then again, Conditional Formatting, but at this time, I'm going to click in Manage Rules. Because here, I can see everything that I did before for the Conditional Formatting, and I can select all those two Conditional Formatting and delete the rule, and I'm going to do it again, and then I'm going to apply just to read it off the conditional formattings that we did. Now we can click here, new rule, and create our own customized formula. So the last option that I'm going to stick with, use a formula to determine which cells to format. And within this formula bar, equal sign, equal sign, I want to format everything that is, let's say, let's consider first, this first cell where I have the first sales value. So every time this first sales value is greater than or equal to $40,000, I want to format with a greenish color. But uh, something that we need to be mindful here is, whenever I select any cell here in Excel, as you can see, I have a dollar sign append before the column and a dollar sign before the row. So we need to read it off the second dollar sign because I want to format and highlight all the rows that I have, the row number five itself and also the row number six, seven, eight, nine, and on and on and on. So this is why I need to read it off the dollar sign. So the second one, let's read it off it like this. Okay, now format, and then I can choose here in the field, a greenish color like this. Okay, okay, apply, and then okay. As you can see, now we have the correct solution again, a second methodology, but uh, this time we are highlighting uh, the two criteria that we have greater than 40 and also equal to 40 at once. So this is how we can use conditional formatting in Excel with two different separate methodologies, let's say. Let's move on now to the last question, the fourth one, where we have maybe a different question that uh, involve VLOOKUP function, XLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, or index and match function. You can use one of those functions to solve this question. So let's read here. Or Matthew forgot to fill in in the name of the products in the sales report. Help him. From the item ID in the sales report, return the name of the corresponding products using the stock list as a reference. So as we can see here in the sales report, everything is okay, but the item's name, because it's everything here is blank. So we need to fill in with the correct item name, corresponding to or matching with the item ID. If I take, for example, here, this item ID, 4116, I can check in the stock list that I have this exactly item ID and this corresponding to the speaker. So I need to look up for the item ID and bring back the name of the item. I can use the VLOOKUP function, the XLOOKUP function, the index match function. There's a lot of functions to use here, but uh, my suggestion is let's stick with the VLOOKUP function because it's a very common function in Excel and we can use it a lot on our daily basis. So Let's go here to the item name and automatically bring the item name based on the item ID. Equal sign V lookup function. Double click here, one, two, to select. The lookup value is going to be the item ID, the value that I have to the left. And then a trauma. The table array or the table where I want to look for the thing that I need to search, let's say, is this table here, the stock list. And I'm going to select both columns because I want to use the first column to look up the values and the second one to bring it back as a result. And then uh, here is very important 
you press the F4 key because that way we can append the dollar sign before the columns and also the dollar sign before the rows. And that way we can fix this reference right here. And whenever we click, hold, and drag down a function in Excel, we can make sure this reference is going to stay in the same position. It's not going to be moved down like this. So it's going to always stay in this position. Different than the item ID that we have here to the left. That are whenever we click, hold, and drag down the function, the item ID is going to be moved down following the function. And the way we can make the function dynamic. Now let's press again, comma, to move on to the third argument that is the column index number or the column that I want to bring it back as result. And this column is the number two because the column two is where I have the values that I want to bring it back as result. Number two, second column, two, and then a comma. The last argument is going to be the exactly match. So double click here, one, two, and then close parentheses, enter. we done. Or almost done. Let's click in the uh, bottom right corner of the cell, click hold and drag down, or double click, one, two, and that's it. So we're done. Now all the rows contains exactly the same function, bringing back the correspondent item name using the item ID with, uh, as the reference. So this is how we can solve all those different or questions in Excel that came up into a job interview. And if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below, and I see you tomorrow. As ever, there has a new video. I see you there.